Welcome back. Sun's coming up. First piece. Start the day off with a weed whip. today's the lawn equipment. Probably going to regret this piece, but I'm grabbing it anyway. This is kind of awkward. Saw the Toyota guy in here too. Still rolling around. Stay. Here he comes right now. Any good stuff? Nah. Bunch of dead lawn equipment right now. Leaf blowers and shit. I just started though. You already did over there, right? Nah, yeah. Yeah. Didn't see nothing good. Yeah, that washer that day. Yeah, I grab. I got ran into it. So you don't think it's worth me going over there? Putting stuff out. Yeah. All right, I'll take a loop. All right, man. Have fun later. Looks like he's a Vietnam vet. Thank you for your service, sir. Give me the right to come out here and pick people's trash, right? Americans. Some light. It is. Oh, and a chunk of chunk of galvanized. All right. Ooh. Oh, we gotta get that out there. brother were both in Vietnam. My great uncle, he never got wounded in action, but he got found by his buddies face down in the mud after a firefight one night. And, uh, apparently one of the valves in his heart went bad, probably from his heart racing the whole time. Ended up blowing out a valve in his heart. They saved him. He got back to the States, had a mechanical valve or something put in his heart. And, uh, you know, back then they had 
you know, battery packs or whatever that went under your skin. And I think he went through two battery packs or whatever, and then he said he wasn't going to go through that surgery and all that crap again. He fell out one day, coming out to go to work, out by the street. crazy luckily my grandfather was never really in any major battles as far as I know he never talked about it as far as I know he was behind enemy lines and he was a driver for a general or something drove him around in one of the uh, jeeps everywhere he needed to go and I know he was behind enemy lines because he had a 30 carbine, which I still have, which is a service rifle. He told me one story of the only confirmed kill that he knows he had. He said he was on the machine gun. You know, they would take, take turns on the machine gun. They had shifts. It was the middle of the night. It was probably about 2 o'clock in the morning, he said. And... Something was walking up the trail. Something or somebody. Here goes the screen door, but it's too bulky to mess with right now. So he yelled out, you know, whatever the command was, and you're supposed to yell back if you're not an enemy, right? He said he yelled it out three times, and they didn't answer, so he just lit them up. He said he heard it hit the ground after he shot it with the machine gun. He didn't know what it was, and he had to sit there for five hours until the sun came up to see what he shot. That's pretty crazy. You're sitting there in the dark for five hours, don't know if you killed somebody or not. You know? When the sun came up, it was a, it was a donkey. <laughs> uh, yeah. Apparently somebody's donkey was walking up the trail and that donkey didn't answer. So it got mowed down. That's the only confirmed kill he ever told me about. I never got to really talk to my great uncle. He died before I was alive. Still in touch with his family. His son comes over every once in a while, hangs out. I don't know, should we grab this or not? It's kind of bulky. I guess I'll grab it. Put it in the back here. If it starts being a problem, just dump it off on somebody else's pile, right? <laughs> motherboard in at least. And no hard drive and no CPU. Bastards. Uh, that one's all busted up. Where do I go? This is one of them Mr. ones. Use water. It's got a brass wand on it. No cord. We're leaving it. And get my knife and cut that off though. Got a couple chairs too. There's a 
the chair in there, but I ain't digging that out. Feels like the battery's on there. Looks all right. Disney cars. I'm gonna probably sell. Well, I'm gonna process some of this stuff in the truck and get rid of some of this other stuff that's piling up around here. So, take a load in this morning, some light iron. Come back when I get there. Get this stuff off. I got a washing machine out back, exercise bike, a couple other things, put some slag in some of this stuff and get rid of it. John made a load too. <laughs> See if we can do this without the sun blinding it. Copper brass.
Well, I got back and unloaded the light iron from that contract. Loaded up some of the uh, heavy iron I got kicking around here. Different stuff. Not too much, but we'll go run it in. Get rid of it. That's a nice copper brass rad there. I don't know if other people do. I mean, you know you got to take the sides off because they're steel. You know, the sides of these copper brass rads are steel. I usually cut the end tanks off too and just put them in as number one. You know, well, it's brass. It's clean brass. I got another one here. It's copper brass with side with steel sides. So I figure if I got to take the time to take the sides off anyway to get copper brass, I might as well just get straight brass for the top top and bottom tank. There's another rad down in there. There's one in that box too, but they're aluminum. I don't know. Probably come back and try to clean some of this stuff up. Oh, that was light iron. I should have took that with the load earlier. Oh well throw it in the trailer you start collecting so much stuff it's just background noise right start forgetting what you got mission to Delaware to sell this 1930s Frigidaire fridge that weighs probably 800 pounds <laughs> yeah you ask me how much you think it weighs yeah, it's, it's heavy. gotta be between it's, 4 and 700 pounds it's freaking heavy man this is the top part okay. hey I'm guessing because, like, the reason why we're probably working is that this place, we got this place a couple years ago. I'm All sorry, right. no, no, no pits inside the house. Yeah. <laughs> Show him the money, right? $600 for an old ass fridge. Yeah. Scores! I knew somebody would want it as yep. soon as I seen it. This dude's living right on the highway. Crazy. <laughs> 